In August 2024, the FDA approved epinephrine nasal spray, branded as Nephi, for the emergency treatment of severe reactions in adults. One year later, experts talk about epinephrine nasal spray's access and impact. The feedback has been very positive so far in terms of patients who were surprised at how rapidly it worked, which really shouldn't be a surprise. Epinephrine is a rapidly acting drug, but I, I think with the new device, they were, wow, you know, and and and, and some of the observers were, were very uh, surprised to see how fast it really works. You know, uh, patients responding within 90 seconds, which is fantastic. Um, and the patients had asked for um, a prescription for Nephi leaving the office after using it. So um, you know, that, that that's pretty good. It's a small sample size. There'll be more data that get presented and, and put out on that uh, over over the years. They they do more offices with this with this program. But the user experiences has generally been pretty positive. Epinephrine nasal spray was approved for adults on August 9th, 2024 and for children on March 5th, 2025. The FDA approved the intranasal uh, self-administered epinephrine option Nephi down to the age of four years old and for kids 33 pounds up to 66 pounds, which is equivalent to the uh, junior dose of uh, self-injectable epinephrine is 0.15 milligrams. That dose is gonna be one milligram. Epinephrine nasal spray has provided an easier way for teachers to administer epinephrine to their students. Well, I think that, that really what's important in terms of the prevention of allergies and then having immunotherapy for early allergies is that this really will open up what which parents can go to work, which kids can go to childcare, what kids will be like at school, and really set that trajectory in a positive motion because this is one major, major risk that kids have that will be somewhat muted um, as we find better solutions. Before epinephrine nasal spray, the fear of needles delayed in life-saving treatment. Parents hesitate, school staff hesitate, even trained adults pause in critical moments. However, food allergies are on the rise, with a 50% increased prevalence since the 1990s. Approximately 33 million people in the U.S. have a food allergy. Needle-free options are reshaping the future. However, new therapies can be slow to become accessible for those who may benefit. So, you know, this is a product that's uh, just approaching its first full year of approval and being available on the market. So with everything, there's always an expected ramp up. But I think coverage has been really good. Initially, uh, it was always available through a program called Blink RX, which is a mail order pharmacy, but it's increasingly over the past couple of months been available in more and more pharmacies. And they're building out that that portfolio when I when I talk to their their markets team. In terms of cost or whatnot, you know, this is always dependent on what your plan is. And, um, you know, it, it, it that that's not exactly a straightforward question, but they do have a couple of things. So out of pocket max, if you were just going to pay cash for this, it's about $200, which is very competitive. Uh, some insurance prices, you might be paying that. Um, and then in terms of, depending on your insurance, there is copay reduction that could be as low as $25, again, depending on, on your plan, depending on your area. Um, we have not clinically heard of too many rejections. We've had to put through some prior authorizations, but that that's sort of par for the course in terms of a of a new drug. And and each quarter that gets better and better. Um, but but I I think it, it's it's out there for patients who would like to try it by prescription. And I I think you know it's it's not at a barrier level that we haven't seen with with other drugs. You know, new or or old. You know, epinephrine is one of those things where sometimes uh, payers make it quite difficult to get access to, to get access to it, um, you know, for affordable prices or whatnot. So uh, this is something as a practicing allergist that we're always used to. It's been a value added, especially thinking of patients that need a needleless free version, specifically for severe uh, allergy or anaphylaxis concerns. And I think creating more awareness of having a needle free option is really important, especially for patients that might have that highest risk. And we've seen an expansion, especially in those pediatric patients or patients that are 15 kilograms to 30 kilograms. So starting to see more expanded use, more patient familiarity with the product. And I think ultimately that's gonna drive a lot of relief for patients, especially those that might have needle phobia or have a reason why an EpiPen is really not the best fit for them. I would say, you know, this is still a medication where there are some barriers, some payer concerns, right? And they're trying to be good stewards compared to an EpiPen versus the nasal epinephrine. 
But if you provide good documentation and really uh, create good awareness around patients that may not be a good fit for epinephrine or an EpiPen, I think it is a viable option. And so, you know, providing that documentation, getting through some of those prior authorization requirements, and I think too, as it's on the market more and people have more familiarity with it, we're hopefully seeing more and more adoption and access among some of the larger payers. I think, you know, with payers, they're trying to create some criteria of use. And so I think the best way is to really provide good justification of maybe why a needleless version might be important for that patient why there might be some needle phobia that'd be associated with it. And, you know, it's very small. It's easy for patients to carry around. And now that there's a, uh, a dose and approval for those that are 15 to 30 kilograms, I think providing that documentation from the provider to the payer helps get better access for the patients. And then they have a prescription or have that medication available for them for more of a long term. In its first year, over 25,000 patients received prescriptions. Over 4,000 prescribers have written for it. Copay support has brought costs down to as low as $25, making access more attainable. In clinic, patients have reported symptom relief in as little as 90 seconds. In terms of cautions, it's it would be nothing that's different than prescribing any other form of epinephrine. You know, there are certain class effects you have to be concerned about, like if somebody has underlying heart condition or whatnot, um, you always have to be cautious in sort of advising patients um, about that. But if somebody needs epinephrine, there is no substitute drug. So that, that's something that you sort of have to accept in terms of prescribing. So nothing that, that I would I would feel is, uh, you know, too much of a barrier to use or whatnot. Um, the one thing that a patient may need to get used to if they use other nasal sprays you can't prime this device it's got one one dose in there and it pushes up if it's something like fluticasone or other nasal sprays sometimes you know you, you pump to to make sure that the you know the because it, it's got a little um you, you gotta you gotta have a, a cord going into the liquid to get the pressure to come up and nephi's built differently than that so it's a single upward plunge um but other than that it, it should be pretty easy to use uh, and, and again it's just the sensation of something going in your nose as opposed to going elsewhere and that that's a trade-off that that I think a patient um, you know it, it should have the right to make one of the other things that that, that the company cautions about would be that um, for you know a, a couple of days to even a, a week or two afterwards because of one of the chemicals that that's in the solution that helps increase the the speed of absorbency um, it may make you prone to other things over the next couple of days to weeks going in um, a little bit faster um, but really you know it, it's not much that I can think of again um, I have venom allergy I carry this myself I haven't had to use it yet but I would have no hesitation and you know as a physician uh, you know even even we don't like needles uh, so I mean it, this is great it, it, it's as minimally invasive as I think an epinephrine device uh, can be at this point so uh, um, you know again should I ever need to use it I'm not going to hesitate to and I hope my patients make the same decision but it's it's up to them we just you know, that the epinephrine that they're going to carry with them is the right one to prescribe. And, you know, if they're telling you that I don't like needles, I'm not going to inject, I'm not going to carry it, you know, you're prescribing something for them that they're they're not going to use when they potentially need it. And that, that, that sets up a lot of potential for um, unnecessary morbidity related with anaphylaxis. Uh, in 20, late of 2023, December 2023, the um, anaphylaxis management guidelines from the, the allergy societies came out and updated their recommendations for out, out of hospital management of anaphylaxis such that patients who administer self-administered epinephrine for symptoms including systemic hives and vomiting uh, don't necessarily have to call 911 or go to the ER. And that's especially relevant for daycares and schools, but also parents. Uh, and it, the goal there was to uh, realize that most patients who get treated with it self-administered epinephrine improve very quickly and that going to the ER is not absolutely necessary in all cases such that that requirement or, or recommendation for all patients to use one dose of epi then you have to go to the ER actually created a barrier yeah. and an additional barrier not just from the needle perspective but also a barrier that made people say well it's not that bad I'm just going to manage it at home I'd rather not give the epi and I would have patients come in to see me and the kid had eaten a peanut they had hives all over their body for three hours, vomited for about 30 minutes and couldn't breathe for an hour. And in that case, the reaction eventually got better. And when I asked him, you know, what made you feel like you, you didn't want to give the up? 
Well, I didn't want to give the up because I didn't want to do the U. Needle-free options are reshaping the future, making early intervention easier and adherence more likely. Nephi is just the start. Um, needle phobia is a big thing, and that's why Nephi and, and the other drugs that are in the development of the pipeline that are needle-free are being developed to help address that. Um, it's a little too soon to tell sort of some of the use patterns, but there's a general thought that if you take away the inertia from injection, that patients will start to use this earlier in the cascade when they start to see the emergence of maybe the first severe symptom as opposed to waiting for three or four of them to arrive and um, delay you know, past nine to 15 minutes or whatnot, just sort of going through the mental motions of, do I, do I use this, is it severe enough or whatnot? So um, that, that, those are data that we, we hope to see over the next year in terms of, of more feedback. Um, in terms of its portability, that's, a, that's another thing that will come out in the next year. I mean, this is a very, very small device. It fits literally in the palm of your hand, the, the individual device. As the twin pack, it's maybe a little bit bigger than the palm of your hand. It comes as a two pack, but the individual device is small enough to fit in the, the palm of your hand. When carried as a as a twin pack, this is still maybe slightly bigger than uh, a cell phone or whatnot. And it comes, you can order a carrying case from the company with a carabiner, can clip right onto your bag or whatnot or fit in your pocket, but it's designed for portability. It's robust to temperature in terms of it can tolerate heat excursions up to like 122 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's also uh, robust to the cold as well. So like, it, it's good in terms of like an active child or an active adult with an with allergic condition that needs to carry epinephrine with them. Um, it doesn't have a window on it. It's, it's protected. Like the other forms of epinephrine tend to have a clear window where, where the epinephrine is actually uh, technically degradable to light or whatnot with exposure. So I mean, this, this is a pretty durable product. It was designed with the portability and lifestyle in mind from my discussions with with the company um, so you know I, it, it's great every device has gotten smaller over time in terms of the evolution of the products and um, this is now the the smallest most portable device I think the biggest question that people have is you know Nephi got approved without any real clinical data there's PK PD data which is the same for all the injectable products and now uh, what clinicians want to see is, um, does it work in practice? And there was just a, a study that we got accepted in the Annals of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology. And I think that came out of uh, ARS's effort to uh, get clinicians familiar with the product and comfortable with using it. So. Basically, what they did is um, they gave um, healthcare providers free samples. And uh, they asked afterwards, did you use it? And how successful was the use? And it turns out that uh, 486 patients uh, were successfully treated with single dose of Nephi, and another 59 required a second dose, but we're successfully treated. So if you look at that, that's approximately 90% of people that received Nephi responded with a single dose. This is almost identical to the numbers that you see with injectable epinephrine. So I think uh, that data, along with uh, some smaller studies and case reports that are coming out will make uh, clinicians a lot more uh, happier. There is one product uh, from Aquestive, which is a sublingual epinephrine film, where the company has submitted their data to the FDA for review for potential approval. So that's probably the next thing that uh, we could potentially see on the market. Uh, the company's supposed to hear that decision by I think the end of January or whatnot. And there, there may be an advisory committee like there was for Nephi where they reviewed the data and, and, and uh, a panel gets asked questions or whatnot. The rest of the products on the, on the market are different forms of intranasal. I think there's another sublingual, it's not a film, but it's it's drop based. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think the, the pharmaceutical industry has recognized that 
This is a drug that certainly could benefit from evolution. Nephi was the first device to answer that call and there, there will be others uh, moving forward. But with more choice that again, only increases the chance that you're gonna find something that your patient is actually willing to carry and use. And really that, that's all that we are looking for in a prescribing decision. I mean, the, the greatest thing is we're trying to be very patient-centered, right? And I think the more um, different routes of administration we have, the better it is going to be for patients. So we talked about that intranasal uh, epinephrine. I think that's added a lot of value to patients, but I think having something like a sublingual at the same regard is also important. And so it enables you know a patient to have really that preferred dosage form and route of administration on hand. Um, and therefore, we can reduce those anaphylaxis, reduce any of those unneeded hospitalizations and give patients that security. And I think sublingual will really expand that armamentarium of treatment options. For clinicians seeing a patient who's at risk for anaphylaxis or any type of severe allergic reaction, I, I think we really do need to ask the tough questions about are you really going to carry this with you? Are you really going to use it and figure out what the barriers are? We can tailor now what we prescribe to them. Some may prefer the, the older auto injectors for whatever reason. Some may prefer the, the new devices. Um, you know, that's the nice thing. We have choices now and we can align this with their preference. So that again, when that person, hopefully it never happens, but they need to use epinephrine. They have something that's with them and they're going to use, and that's going to decrease, you know, the risk of hospitalization, the risk of other bad outcomes or whatnot. And it's gonna make the reaction sort of go away early. You know, the earlier you treat this, the, the easier it is to deal with. So um, devices like this only help us. And I think it's, it's great that the market is seeing this as a need. And ideally there'll be additional products out there to give choice. But, you know, right now we have we have a great alternative to an auto injector. And, you know, this is something that I, I think uh, physicians should be talking to their patients about. I think we need to get awareness that there are choices now. Most 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 prescribers may not know that. So, um, you know, it, again, it's first year of the life cycle of the drug. Um, you know, it, it does take some time to implement or whatnot, but uh, the allergy community is certainly excited about having this alternative.